There's also um, four different size circles that you're going to need, so all the shapes are in the pattern for you to trace. So when I do my shapes, I like to trace everything onto my paperback fusible webbing. Um, and like I have done here, and I, then I just like to, so I have it a little bit larger than my actual shape, and then I like to cut out on the actual traced drawn line so that you get a nice cut. It cuts through the paper with the fabric very nicely. You get a nice edge. And this is how I do all my applique shapes. So I'll just finish cutting that one out. And as you can see, I have actually already cut the other circles and the bird out that I need for this strip that we're working on. But I'm just going to show you on this one circle now. So what we do is we've got a, this, see this yellow circle? Well, it doesn't look like a whole circle there particularly because it's covered up. We, but we do do it with a whole circle. And I'm just going to finger press that in half now because I just want a line. Doesn't, I'm not particularly trying to keep the grain straight or anything like that in the fabric, but I want the line so that I center my circle over that seam that we've sewn so that it sits just where I want to. So by finger pressing that line, that helps you position it. And then we're going to just take off the paper backing. As you've got the fusible on the back of the fabric now, we don't need the piece of paper. And we're going to bring the iron over again because we're going to iron that in place now. So as I said, we've got a nice finger press line, we've got a seam line, and we're trying to match them up. Now when you're positioning this, you'll find that the circle pretty much fills the whole strip, all except for the quarter inch either end for your seam allowance. So just make sure that that's sitting nice and central between that so that there is a seam allowance at each end. And then you can press that on. And then we're going to applique around it. So I like to work in individual layers. We are going to be layering another circle on top, but I would rather get this one appliqued first, then come back and do the other one. Now when I'm doing applique, I've been working with my quarter inch foot. I'm going to take that off and I'm going to put on an open toe embroidery type foot so that I can see where I'm going with the applique. And it also allows my needle to swing because I'm going to go into a little blanket stitch, which means the needle swing and we don't want to be hitting the foot and breaking needles and damaging all sorts of other things. So I'll just go into my stitch here now. So I've gone into a little blanket stitch, it might be a zigzag, you might be doing some straight stitch, whatever it is that you're choosing to do. And I'm going to bring that to the machine and I'm just going to blanket stitch all the way around that circle. So I want it so that my needle comes down and goes into the background fabric and swings onto for the little blanket stitch that holds the applique in place. So, so you end up with a little bit of a straight stitch pretty much coming all the way around the edge but with these little bits that go in to hold your fabric. So, that's, so when you're going around a, a curve that's quite large like this you can probably just swivel the fabric a little bit as you go so that it follows that circle line. A bit later I'll show you with the bird where it's a little bit tighter shapes how to get around some of the little curves and things. So I'll just keep going around. So I've just finished doing moment. my little blanket stitch around my big circle there and I'm going to position these other, we've got three different size circles here and one of them is just going to go on top of that yellow circle but at a little bit of an angle or sort of off centre so that you just get the little yellow present showing and we'll just do it so that so this one you don't need to particularly finger press or anything because it's just sitting on top and we just want to bring it over so that one edge at some stage is touching and I think that's sitting quite nicely like that so again iron that in place and then that's ready to applique but while I'm here so that I can go ahead and do all three of the next circles at once I'll show you how I positioned the other two as well so for this, I would suggest that you now fold this over and just do a gentle finger press. So match up your seam where we've joined up there and that raw edge along there. And just gently pop a little finger press line in there. You don't want a great heavy line, don't press it with your iron. But just gives you a bit of a guide to keep you in the middle 
of your strip there. And then again with these little circles, like we did with the big yellow one, finger press a halfway line so that we can position them along this line that we've just finger pressed here. So I'm going to position my circles and the pattern tells you all this with somewhere around three inches between, so measuring from the edge of the yellow circle to the edge of where this next little circle is going to go and I'm just going to lay that there so that the fold lines line up with halfway through the circle and halfway through the background strip. I'm going to iron that in place. It's not critical but I'm putting the same distance between each circle just really as a way of making it a bit easier to achieve. If your finger press line is disappearing as mine is, just pop it back in there and then grab your smaller circle which again you've got a finger pressed halfway line on and again, I use my ruler with, to help with these sort of measurements. Lay that on there. And lay your circle also on that line, just there. And so they're all ready to applique now, uh, with the blanket stitch all the way around. And then we'll come back and do the bird afterwards. So I'll just go back to the machine now and get my circles all applique on. And then I'll show so you I've finished applicating my circles, I've got them all on now, I've just got the bird to put on. So I've got my little bird already cut out here, I'm going to peel the paper off and position him inside this slightly smaller circle. And so you kind of want to have a look at your strip and see how it's going, you kind of, well you might want him going up the side, but generally speaking I wanted him as if he was just sort of sitting there. So I thought I'd just position him where you're comfortable so that his feet are pretty much lining up with the edge of that circle. So he might just come back a bit there and I'm just going to iron him on. And then I'll, I'll do a little bit of the applique to show you how to do some of those little fiddly shapes when you're going around. It's just a little bit different than just doing a straight or almost straight sort of line. So when I'm doing something that's got some little fiddly bits to it, I often look at starting to do the fiddly bits early in the piece and the feet are probably the most fiddly on this. So I would start a bit before the feet and go around them and come all the way around. And it's just an outline, I haven't done any details or anything on him. And, and so that I've kind of done the hardest bit first. I often like to get the harder bit done and then treat myself with the easier bit coming afterwards. So that's what I'm going to do now. We'll start just before the feet so that I can show you because it's a little bit fiddly to go around. Always make sure that your needle is on the right hand side, like onto your background, on doing that sort of straight stitch that it does when it's um, doing a blanket stitch. So I'm going to start here just, just before the feet. Line it up and now I might just hold it in place and let it do an extra stitch on top of itself and that locks it so that I can just trim off that thread. I don't have to worry about pulling it through particularly. And then I'm just going to applicate. So if you have a needle down position on your machine, that's a really good time to use it. If you don't, just whenever you stop sewing to move anything, make sure that your needle is down in the fabric so that that allows you to move it around without losing your place. So I'm going to turn the corner now. So I've got my needle down and I'm going to just pivot it around. So when you're doing sort of sharper or tighter shapes, don't go wrenching your fabric because your stitches will all go a little bit crooked. You need to sometimes to stop every stitch to turn the fabric just a little bit more. So I'm just here, I need to turn it again. Now I can, because I locked that stitch off, I'm just going to snip that one out of the way. And I'm just going to go around his little foot here. sort of gauge where you need to stop and yes this is quite tight going around his foot but if you stop frequently you'll find that you can swivel that around and your stitches your stitches should always be going in at sort of right angles to your shape even if it's sort of on a curve that they come in and around the shape so that you don't want them going at funny angles where it goes on to the applique it should always be going straight onto the applique I'm just 
just go around the rest of the foot and then I think we'll probably know how to do the rest of it. have a knee lift for your machine that helps with this sort of turning with lifting the foot and things. Um, I haven't got it on today. And then from here on it, it gets a little bit easier. The feet were definitely the fittiest. And just continue on around with your little blanket stitch or however you're choosing to do your applique. So I've finished doing all my applique, my little birds all stitched around and now I need to join my strips up together. So you need to do all your applique before you can join all your rows together. So that's kind of fun to be at that stage and that's the stage I'm now at because I've already done all mine.